People who have met their online friends, what made you instantly regret it? Met my best friend at the time on League of Legends. After talking every day for 3 years, I ended up moving to a state much closer to him, so we decided to finally meet. We talked before about all the things we'd do together and how awesome it would be. I loved him so, so much. He was there for me through so much and was a wonderful friend. He had a new girlfriend at the time of our meetup and he brought her along with him. I had no problem with this, because I'd love to meet the woman who makes him happy. It was abundantly clear from the get go that she wasn't a real big fan of me. I did my best to be kind, and still had tons of fun. I didn't hear from my friend much after that. A mutual good friend of ours messaged me and when I asked about my best friend, they said that his girlfriend was telling people that I was basically an awful person for whatever reason. Three years later and he is engaged to this woman and I'm happy for him, but I haven't spoken to him in those three years. I still miss him every day, and I wish I could be there for him on his wedding day. Not instant regret, but did make me realize things could have gone badly if this friend hadn't been a good human. I used to play Halo 2 with a guy, Polistid Spartan. I always thought the name was hilarious, and he said it was what Xbox randomly assigned him when he let XBL choose his username. That has nothing to do with how the event went, just his name in case he's on Reddit lol. We were playing Halo one day and I made some off the wall comment about how bad traffic was due to them redoing one of our local roads, and he said his town was redoing a lot of roads too. I think I had a friend overall coming over, and I forgot to mute my mic and said the road he lived on. Asking when he had to leave come over again this was 15 years ago. A little fuzzy. Anyways. Polistid Spartan was like holy crap. Do you live in Ziz and I told him yeah. Turns out he lived like 5 miles away from me on the other side of town. We met up. I was about 11 or 12 at the time. He was like 17. And he went and bought me a burger and milkshake while we chatted. Pretty cool dude from what I remember. But when I got home I thought about how different that could have been if he wasn't just some high schooler trying to make a kid's night with a burger and shake. Then he bxrd you I roll and teabag you. Rough. My brother met a girl in person that he had known for 4-5 years online during which time they had kind of had an online relationship. She had brought her friend with her to meet him and while they were sitting around a table awkwardly making conversation, with my brother apparently quite shocked at how bad she looked in person compared to how she looked online, and having absolutely no interest in her other than as friends, the girl sent her friend a message saying omg get me out of here. He's looking at me like he wants to jump me, but she accidentally sent it to my brother. What ensued was likely incredibly painful to be part of. My brother showed her his phone and looked at her in disgust. I would kill for such an easy out. I am leaving to meet them abroad in less than 24 hours. Thanks for the good sign man. These are the exceptions, not the norm. I've met countless folks from the internet and still have all my kidneys, even a couple extra. Maybe not regret it, but it gave me years of depression. I met my best friend through Minecraft. Never made friends in this and I just wanted to play with someone. I have no idea why, so I complimented this girl's skin. We started talking. She was American. I am Polish and my English sucked. We moved to Skype and at first I mostly typed, but later on she started teaching me English somehow by talking with me. She was one year older. We knew each other for almost a year and I was staying up all night just to talk to her and her friends that she introduced to me. She was also depressed so we talked with each other and she was the first person that truly listened to me. We had plans of visiting each other, and then our mutual friend told me she committed suicide. Four years passed by and now at least I can talk about it and not cry. Still miss her very much though. I met my old friend on Roblox about three years ago but he turned out to be like 40. You did say it was your old friend. She flew in town to be a bridesmaid in my wedding. And she decided to cheat on her husband with one of the groomsmen and blame me for that. Because it was my wedding so that clearly makes it my fault she was unfaithful. How dare you have a wedding. On this. The day of my adultery. Met a girl I really liked on WoW but she lived in another country. After a couple of vacations there it turned into a relationship. Made the decision to move and start a new live there with her. After living there for 4 months I slowly realized she was crazy as heck. Huge mood swings paired with alert of aggression. Ended up getting stabbed in the side by her while asleep. 
Needless to say, after getting out of the hospital I took the first plane back home. She's still in a psychiatric hospital. I invited him over to my house and he shat all over my toilet. Just to clarify, it was not in the toilet, it was on the seat and a bit of it landed on the floor. Well that's a conversation starter, jeez. It was supposed to be a date. She had her hand on another guy's leg at the bar. I did a Grandpa Simpson at the burlesque. I enjoyed this description of your quick escape. He catfished me. Always bragged about how he lost a bunch of weight and then looked like the before pictures he posted. Not that I personally cared but he got a lot of online attention from girls because of this. Also he made fun of me for being poor. That is. Having a beat up car. Eating cheap food. Etc. What a douche. He can stick all of it up his butt, even if it doesn't fit. I have weird story about a lesbian I met online and eventually I roll. For reference I'm a B girl. We started talking after I made a comment on a lesbian forum about being a single lesbian mom. I still didn't know if I was B or a lesbian at the time. We started messaging a lot. Hundreds of texts a day. This included Sesto and trading nudes a lot too. But she was always obsessed with my daughter. Like almost demanding pictures of her and updates on her. Eventually we arranged to meet up. When we finally see each other in person she looks shocked and asks where my daughter was. Being babysat by mom so we can have a date. I could tell this threw her off a bit. After our date we start hooking up at my place. Even then she was still asking about her. After this can I meet her would you let me babysit do you think she'll start calling me mommy I was like chill she's 1.5. This combined with her being obsessed with my daughter's stuff including stealing a pacifier, a dirty onishi, going through the diaper pail. I decided this lady is crazy. She ended up stalking me for a while but I was moving back in with my mom anyway so I managed to escape. Sounds to me like she either is desperate for a child or, hopefully not, a PR-file. Glad you kept her away. Was it a really bad place? Got bullied in school, was kinda chubby, and had some social anxiety. Went to LAN party with some friends I met over playing WoW. At the time I regretted it because they actually were good for me and gave me happiness. It ruined my then current plans for taking my life. Today I love them all more than life. The fact the guy kept calling his exes crazy. He forgot I know several of his exes and they were still are the least craziest people I know. Ah yes. The Tom Haverford method. When I was in high school I met a guy from a different high school in a local chat room. We hit it off and after a few days we agreed to meet up at the store I worked at once I finished work. Well I guess he showed up a little early, with a friend, and came through my check stand. I thought it was him, we'd swapped photos, but I was really shy and didn't want to be wrong. I waited for him to introduce himself, but he never did. And he and his friend paid for whatever they had and left without conversation. I was still hopeful that wasn't the guy. So I waited up for him for an hour after my shift. Of course, he never showed. Because that absolutely was the guy. He must have been disappointed when he met me in the checkout line and instead of being a decent person and saying he wasn't interested, he just ghosted me. If I could go back in time, I definitely would have said something to him at the check stand. That's my one regret. Do dating up people count? Because he told me he was a vampire within 10 minutes. Oh 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 I have a vampire story. My first boyfriend ever told me he was a vampire. Twilight was very popular at the time. And then asked if I would sacrifice my humanity to be a vampire too. I played around and was like ye sure and then the sucker bit my neck lmfao. When I was 14 I had an online friend two states away who was 14. He and his mom took a trip TLC me and the first thing we did when we saw each other was run full speed at one another. Our heads bounced off each other and I chipped my tooth and broke his braces. I am pretty sure his front tooth was also loose and had to go to the dentist to fix it lol. Met up with a friend I met in WoW. I fell down steps. Instead of helping or asking if I am okay, she laughed. Hard, like, not breathing, on the floor, gasping for air, seal clapping hard. We've been friends for like 8 years ever since that and she still reminds me. She probably just didn't want you to cry. It works on babies. Friend for 6 years flies over to Australia to hang with me for a month. Little did I know he was a bit taller than me. I was 5 feet 10 inches. He was, well, 
6 feet 7 inches. I never knew he was this tall. He never talked about it. And when I was at the Brisbane airport waiting for him, I texted him stating I don't know where you are. To which he replied look up. Towering over everyone is this blonde guy that has the arm span of the airport lobby. I cried. We laughed. And I regret bringing him over because my ceiling almost hits his head. Bet you regret not cleaning the top of the fridge now. We went to a convention and he drunkenly told me and my boyfriend that he wished we weren't together so he could sleep with me. It was very awkward. And he's lucky my boyfriend, now husband, is a patient man. It was my friend Kate who befriended this girl, Jessica, who allowed us to come and stay with her when we traveled to the US. Jessica was rude to me instantly and kept my friend away from me. I'd go upstairs and she'd find a reason for them to go downstairs. She had Kate share her bedroom and she'd lock the door for hours and so I'd just go off and do my own thing. We met her two odd friends and they both ignored me. When it was time for Kate and I to move on to another state, Jessica insisted on coming with us. The lady we stayed with in another state, Robin, took no crap and called Jessica out on her strange behavior. Jessica proceeded to lock herself in a room and demanded Kate stay in there with her. They were in there all day and eventually Kate came out and said to me that there's something wrong with Jessica and she's actually scared. We, Kate and I, had plans to stay with another online friend, Matt, in another state and Jessica demanded we cancel because she doesn't like or trust Matt. We said no, this is our holiday and we've paid for flights, and Jessica said then she will come with us but we can't meet up with Matt. We said no, she cried, we left. Kate blocked her on everything. Kate's mother called us not long after saying Jessica contacted her crying, saying Kate is in danger and we abandoned Jessica, and she's so concerned for my friend's safety it was actually incredibly scary. Kate found out later from another girl, Jane, they all knew each other from a forum. That Jessica had been telling everyone they were in love and had even slept together. I don't know how much of that is true but I've known Kate for 20 years now and she's never identified as anything but straight. She denied it 100%. Jessica was just obsessed with her. And months later Kate heard Jessica was telling everyone she was saving money to come to our country to find Kate. She never did. Thankfully. Other than the time spent with this girl. We had a great holiday and made some good friends. I still talk to Matt, he is great. I met a friend on here and we planned to travel together. We were in Des Vuida city to start hitchhiking. I instantly regretted it because he seemed like he had no clue of what was happening and that made everything a bit annoying. That feeling lasted two days. And now I miss him very much and hope we could see each other again soon. On mobile so forgive me for any weird formatting. I, F22, had a friend. M26, online for 11 years before we met. I'm Canadian, he is American. We met on a RP site when we were quite literally still kids and were a massive part of one another's lives, especially during our teenage years. We spoke every day through text, on the phone, had each other on social media. We even knew and sometimes spoke to each other's family and friends in real life. He called me his light and his sister, and I called him my brother. We were family. It would take a whole novel to explain our 11 year friendship and what we have been through together. But I'll just try to make it short by saying he had a very crappy and unstable life and a lot of mental health problems. He was a narcissist. I spent many years being his emotional crutch and punching bag. Helping him find jobs. Being there for his breakdowns. I never broke off the friendship because after all those years, I kind of felt responsible for him. Anyways, last year we finally decided to meet. We were both grown adults and saved money to go on a 10 day trip to a dream destination of mine in the states. I knew this likely would not go well. I knew he was a narcissist, but I just had to meet him. I had to meet my brother, the guy that was there for over a decade. I needed to see him face to face. On this trip he, one, abandoned me on a mountain during a hike because he decided he wanted weed. When he came back I was obviously mad and wanted to go back to our hotel but he told me to wait for him in the car while he did the hike on his own. I took an Uber home and he returned as well 4 hours later. 2. Automatically assumed I'd shell out $300 for him to buy a laptop he wanted, without asking me, just brought me to the store to look around while we waited for our movie to start at the theater and sprung it on me. I refused. 3. Was overall inconsiderate. 
We only ate at places where he wanted to eat, when he wanted to eat, only did things he wanted to do and not me. Despite the trip being my idea, I missed out on a lot because he just wanted to sit around and do nothing, and so much more. What hurt the most is when I confronted him about it. He told me you're not my girlfriend. I don't need your approval or need to change for you to like me. I cut the friendship off and blocked him when we returned home. I also plan on retaking my dream trip one day and doing it properly this time. When I was 19 I jumped on a flight to meet a friend I had known for about 4-5 months. We both went through family bereavements and were a shoulder to cry on for each other, via the phone or internet, and we just decided to meet for a few days in a country between us. Until then everything had been perfect, she was the coolest girl, really smart, the kind of person you want to be around all the time. When we met things started great but a day later she confessed you're not what I expected. Um, what 19 year old and not very confident, this knocked me sideways. I don't know, just, you seem different. I never did who I was before we met, was completely open and it put a real sour taste on the rest of my time with her. Instead of chatting non-stop and watching Jackass on TV in the hotel at night, we went quiet and straight to sleep, ate in silence. I put as much effort as I could into it but I still never got to the bottom of how I was different. We went our separate ways, text for a few days then never spoke again. She meant you weren't attractive enough for her. She had a fantasy in her head. Not quite an instant regret, but there were two people I was meeting. Maisie and Maya. For the purpose of the story, we discussed meeting again, planned to have sleepovers, just generally have fun. The first day we met up went really well. We all had a good time. I thought it went brilliantly. Then a few weeks later I found out they were carrying out all the plans. Without me, they still have sleepovers to this day when Maya's back from uni and I'm just left out. I don't speak to either of them anymore. It hurt lol. To heck with them. Turns out my internet friend was a registered diddler. He was a former high school teacher who was having physical relationship with one of his 15 year old students. I thought the guy seemed a bit odd. But when I saw the headline in the newspaper a lot about his strange reclusive lifestyle started making sense. We are no longer friends. Whoa. This exact thing happened to me. I had to travel to my country's capital for a surgery. After the surgery I couldn't move for 3 days. But the first day when I got up from the hospital bed. I obviously celebrated and told my online friends. They asked what hospital I was in. Long story short, they lived close and came to visit me, but it until thiefing. What do you regret? I regret meeting them in a wheelchair, not having showered, under heavy opioids. They were absolutely wonderful people, and I'll be seeing one of them in a few hours as she is visiting my hometown. Never actually met Heim but played Apex with a dude pretty regularly, almost every day. We finally exchanged info and then he used to call me repeatedly in depressed fits and be about how girls don't like him. It sucks cause I wanted to help but like, once it hit 36 calls in one day, I had to block colon. Lol holla shit. Dude was wearing like half a fursuit. I just turned around and texted that something came up and I couldn't make it. I actually worked with this lady at the time. She was good looking and very flirtatious. Most importantly, we both played World of Warcraft at its prime. She ended up inviting me to join her server and being a then frisky 20 something. I, of course, joined up. We played for a time and had a good PvP group going. Her regulars. Of course she was still flirty with me in game and I was back. All in group chat. Either way, we had some great times together slaying players in PvP. Summer comes and it's a company BBQ. I find out she is bringing one of our PvP partners to the event. Cool. It was her husband. A cop. I've been virtually sestoing her in game in front of him for 3 months. I regret I haven't met them sooner. It was my uncle. Worst right swipe ever. Welp. I'm meeting an online friend of 6 years in a few days. From this thread I can now safely assume he's a dying sectarian stalker who wants to be more than friends. Oh and he's actually 40, don't forget that. When I realized they didn't want to just be friends. They wanted to be best friends. We met over a dead by daylight game. He was really charming, funny and nice. 
Then he fell in love with one girl of our gaming group and they started a long distance relationship. But he even flew in to meet her in person. Turns out he is an abusive, narcissistic butthole, who constantly belittled my friend. He gaslighted her and loved to play psycho games with our group. We stopped playing with him after a few weeks, because he was so toxic to our group. Sadly, my friend struggled at that time and had difficulties to break up with him. Took her several weeks to finally do it. She is so much better now. Frick you bowl. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.